Okay, the recording has started, if I'm not mistaken. And so welcome everybody. This is the 3W6 convention live from Austria, Vienna, although I think nobody here is from Austria uh, and Vienna, at least uh, as a German, I can tell you that it's high risk area and Germans shall not travel there at the moment. And this is why the convention, which is usually happening at this time of the year in Vienna, face to face, has moved online. It's mainly story games and tabletop RPGs. However, they have a very open mind and open heart for um, uh, live action online games or digital labs or wh however you want to call them. And this is why we are very welcome here at this convention. And when you want to spend more time at the convention and there are also a couple of uh, live action games you can play there, then the, the Trello board and the Discord are your friends and you can hang out all weekend long and play all the games there. It's a fantastic and very welcoming community. Um, and a fantastic and welcoming community also, I think, is um, our community here. Those people who play games uh, which are lab related online together. And I think they are very, very different angles we are coming from. There is um, like people who LARP at big events at all weekend long. There are smaller LARPs, there are print and play LARPs, so many different styles of LARPs. And there are also people who actually don't LARP in real life for various reasons, like accessibility, uh, health reasons, anxieties, many, many different reasons can that have. And online LARPing is actually their way to go and to dive into this area. Um, but I don't want to talk the whole time. I will try just to moderate and guide us through this. And so I thought we start with the first little exercise to get to know each other a little bit and each write on this whiteboard or in the chat. And then hopefully somebody can help me to convert this to the white whiteboard. Three hashtags which describe your relationship to online LARPing, like three hashtags. And I have put my three already on here. And these are, oh my God, so many games. I love mechanics and online emotions go strong. Yeah, just to give you an example. So take your time and if you want, then contribute to this. I see there are already a couple of others. There's some in the chat. And if you hit, uh, I think like view options and annotate is how I put my hashtags on there with Garrett's. Ah, yeah. Yeah, then you can add. Or you just tell me and I type them in here. So I, I can't see them in the chat at the moment because maybe because I, I'm sharing the whiteboard. So if somebody could help me in typing those which are in the chat, that would be nice. Kind of overlapping, so it's uh, getting <laughs> becoming a big mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see where where we end, how organized this group is. Yeah. Yeah, and hashtag pros. Uh, I can mind you. I, I I learned recently that if you use a camel case, that is actually very helpful for people um, who are um, like. Uh, um, how do you say, listen impaired. So when they read like uh, hashtags and they don't have camel case, then it's very difficult uh, for the automatic text to speech to properly read them. But John, that shouldn't where stop did you. you. Oh, sorry. Um, John, where did you say the annotate button was? Uh, for me, uh, there's a, a bar at the top that says you're viewing Garrett Reininghouse's screen and under view options immediately to the right and drop down and annotate. That's where I put, that's where I found it on my Windows machine. And it might be different. Oh, that one. Oh, all the way in the top. Okay. okay. Can you just restate the prompt one more time? The prompt is uh, your relationship to online lab. Three hashtags. Oop. That's not it. <laughs> Cool. 
Nice. We got a couple. That looks beautiful. So everybody is ready. Okay, cool. So I would make a start and tell you about my hashtag and then maybe everybody who wants can say something about their hashtags and I will like go through the list and then you just tell me quickly if you want to contribute or prefer not. Oh, oh my God, so many games. Yeah, that is my feeling for 2020 because there, were, there was Tara and <laughs> there was me. <laughs> And we found each other quite quickly because there wasn't so much going on in terms of online labs. There was view scrim, obviously, but um, yeah. And then later a few other early um, in instantiations of online labs appeared, but now the world looks so different. I love mechanics is because this is how I start my design. I usually discover something I find amazing, like an online technique, something which I see like an outscore that you can, the reflection of the screen can illuminate your face in different colors. And then I say, okay, I need to make a game out of that. This is what I enjoy so much, something you can't do face to face. And finally, you know, online emotions go strong. Yeah, that is like some people think that online and just being so separated from each other physically, you can't have like this strong emotion labs, which you can have in physical space. And I have experienced it differently. I had all the emotions online as well, and I like them. And uh, John, would you like to take over? Yes, thank you. I will scroll the screen so I can see what, what I put. Um, I put mine were something like convert, you know, previously a doubter and now i'm have been having a lot of fun with online larps uh and new to them as of you know march 2020 and finally small groups preferred that is um maybe my heart is changing on that one but by default uh uh i'm still learning all the tools to manage a large group experience and online uh larp experience so something that small it gives me more of that like one-to-one -one or one two or three player like in scene intensities that give me the online strong emotions you want to speak on this, Tara? Yeah, sure. Um, I've used online tools for both small and large. So I'd love to get into that more later after we're through with the hashtags, but absolutely, I'm very into that. I chose International LARP Solutions because I've been able to meet and role play with friends from around the world, including some other friends from the US who have moved to Europe, which has been great. I get to still keep in touch with them. Uh, I also chose freeform LARP goals because it's a pretty good format for freeform gaming, especially with a small group. And I lastly chose group rituals because I've ventured into combining uh, more of like deliberate rituals with live action role play through the online format, which has been really fascinating and fun to just find, feel that connection with people, even though they're not near you. And we've had some emotional experiences through that. Thank you very much. Mats, do you want to continue? Um, yeah, sure. I think I'm going to do them in reverse order, though. Uh, that's a better narrative. Um, yeah, for me, I hadn't really done uh, online role playing much until this year. Um, but when my favorite con was uh, uh, was uh, canceled, I needed a substitute of a sort. So we, we we played a couple of games online, and it, even though even those of them that weren't made for it actually uh, worked okay, at least um, uh, those fitting the format. Um, and then when I when I think it was John actually that uh, that linked some uh, some Lauks, and I was like, oh, you can do all sorts of weird shit. <laughs> with the with this format, you can make weird uh, mechanics, and I thought that was really interesting. And uh, I've made games too for a while. I've um, written eleven games, uh, so I sort of I know uh, I know not a lot about mechanics and design. But this was like a brand new world. I can do different things that I'm used to, and I think that's sort of that's very interesting. Glad to hear. Cool. 
Uh, Netta, I played with you last Saturday. What did you put on, on here? Sorry, yes. Um, hi again, Garrett. Um, so I put role play vulnerability because I, well, I'm really new to this. I made my first uh, log which Garrett participated in. And I read a bunch about it this summer, about LARPing. I didn't know about Laug as a thing until I until Garrett signed up for mine. And then I found Garrett's writing. Um, but I'm most excited about character bleed and role, like designing the character development or the role play to invite people to maybe secretly be vulnerable or to find ways to involve their real selves or things that they really are worried about or wondering about um, in the in their character and I also wrote making implicit structures explicit because I guess I like LARP or LAUG as a way to like take an ordinary social event like this you know like doing like a panel discussion and sort of make mechanics that make what would otherwise be implicit structures more explicit and then you can play with those structures. I find that exciting. Indeed. Thank you. And Sarah? Um, so uh, I put upside down and outside the box are sort of the same thing. Just the idea that you can think like think up, think outside the box or do different cool things that you can't do in real life. LARPs uh, or games. And then I also put real feels because to my, to my surprise and delight, I can feel things really in a real way in an online LARP as much as I can in a real life LARP. And that was like really, it, it was a kind of a huge relief to me that, cause you know, obviously I miss on real life LARPing, but um, knowing I can still have like strong emotional reactions, which of course some of you have already mentioned as well um in online games it's been good thank you so much and then we have five people and hi to all of them so i, I won't say your name because i don't know if you want to see that mentioned online but um not sure if they they are visible in the recording though um uh, does anybody of you want to tell about their their hashtags or sh shall we just leave them as they are Yeah, I'd like to. Cool. BPG. Hi, this is BPG. Um, very excited to be here. So first I got emotions, 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 hashtag, because it's uh, <clears throat> ultimately that's the uh, greatest profit of uh, playing for me is to have uh, connect with each other on an emotional level and also discover uh, emotional depths or corners on an emotional le level inside myself. Uh, through uh, playing, so that's uh, very important. I love mechanics. When I design, I love mechanics and I love uh, dissecting games, looking what's inside. But uh, when I play, I'd like them to be as invisible as possible, oddly not feeling them. And then I have uh, what's important for me, I love workshopping. Now, um, I haven't played, um, well, let's see, uh, the way I know Garrett, I think he likes the uh, LARPs that are like immersive. So you're like uh, completely uh, in a certain uh, scenario and you stay there. And I like, I called it workshopping. I hope that fits. So what I mean is like, I like playing little scenes, replaying them again, um, during play, switch to meta uh, level, discuss something, go in a different direction, switch roles. I love doing stuff like that. And uh, my experience is like, there are a few people who love that and it's, I, I absolutely love that. And there are people who, who just like, when I bring in these things, they just look at me and they, they hate me for that. So, um, um, so that's something I love. And uh, um, for, for the session, I'd be curious if there's something in this uh, Laok world also for me, for somebody who loves uh, doing stuff like that. Exciting, yes. Uh, anybody else from the invisible group who wants to, to tell about their hashtags? 
If not, I would stop sharing the whiteboard and then we can see each other a little bit better, I think. Um, and there we go. All right, so um, we come from very different backgrounds and I thought the best way to get to know each other and is like doing a questionnaire. And I saw that is a new feature which was activated in my, um, <laughs> Uh, uh, in my Zoom account recently and I thought I need to try that. So I will throw this questionnaire, which I just put like 10 minutes ago online. So <laughs> don't worry about the strange questions. So we could see the live results of this coming in. Um, so you can enter that if you want, you don't have to. Um, and somehow I, can, I think I can share the results. Um, and we see them live coming in. I don't know how that works, but we can try that. Um, do you see them? Perfect, okay, you can do that in the meantime. So getting to know each other uh, is like the hashtags I think were quite nice. Um, I have a lot of things which I would like to discuss with each of you <laughs> um, because of what you mentioned. Um, but like, I think it makes sense because we don't know each other all. It's like that we tell us a, a little bit of ourselves like, and I think the best way to do this because of our shared passion is like to tell us about our best experience we have made with online laughing so far, if that makes sense. So you can just raise your finger like on the camera or just uh, put like a hands up or something. If you have something you would like to contribute to this or just sh shout, that also works. Um, I can start and I, I would say Makeup Moments is uh, the game which uh, is most exciting for me and I played it, uh, for example, with Tara and I, in that game, interestingly, I, the most exciting moment for me is when the game is over and we have done selfies at the end. In this game, you, um, you put makeup on and in character. So you create characters a little bit and you go to an event together and it's all very cheerful and supportive and enthusiastic. But uh, in the end you do a debrief and talk about relationship, the, your relationship to makeup. And that is so different and tells us so much about gender norms, about beauty standards, about our societies we live in. And especially when we come from different societies and backgrounds, these can be so emotional and so important discussions, which always give me a lot to think about. And so this lab, this extends for me, like it is, it continues to be present and therefore it's still played even a day after. Well, and I need to remove the makeup, but that also takes some time. <laughs> so that I would say is for me the most, or the best experience I made. Also because it's short and yeah, I like short games. <laughs> Um, anybody wants to tell about their favorite or best LARP experience online? <laughs> Tara. I think for me, it was during uh, a LARP I wrote called Sanctuary Avalon. Um, and it was really just learning about people's uh, real life traditions and goals because the premise of the LARP is that uh, a bunch of femmes meet in Avalon to support Queen Guinevere and through the LARP we go through different rituals and those rituals are pretty much based upon what the different players and characters want to do. I mean it's, it's very free form. I give them a workbook but usually we throw the workbook out the window. It's just kind of there to make them I guess feel like there's a, you know, a structure to it because people like that structure. But learning about other people's backgrounds because I asked the players to consider their own background and of course avoid appropriation. I just learned so much in researching and, you know, working with people to write these characters and to see that come through and to see people play not only who they are and, and what their background is, but what their goals are for exploring and experiencing that was a different type of connection than I've ever had in any LARP experience. Oh, yeah, thank you for sharing. And John, do you have something? Yeah, um, I, I'm so pleased and impressed about the uniqueness uh, of Garrett and Tara's 
uh, descriptions that are really native to the online environment. I'm afraid mine is very simple. It's um, V. Bora's The Space Between Us, which I find is just a really well executed uh, five or six player game that involves a lot of two or three player scenes that are like tightly set and uh, paced by a game master with a little bit of like, you can chat to people when you're not actively in scenes. Um, but I was like, am I ready for six hours of space sadness uh, in front of my computer? And it just fully executed uh, on, in a familiar environment that allowed me to bring all my freeform role play skills to bear in a way that felt very at home, despite it being through a camera. Cool, yeah. I hear a lot of good, good things about that laugh as well, yes. Um, Netta, I would love to hear from your game, actually. Well, I feel a little silly saying it's like my favorite online LARP experience because it's my only online LARP experience. Um, but I did have a wonderful time uh, facilitating an online LARP that uh, it's called Zoom Reality TV. Actually, there's going to be a screening in a couple weeks of the, um, the footage, but it's about a futuristic uh, sort of dystopi dystopian setting in which uh, Zoom is putting on workshops to help people with their social anxiety because they're not using Zoom enough. Um, and it's also shot as like a reality TV episode where people go off camera to record their emotions. Um, and yeah, it's, I guess it's still in process. So I'm still in that kind of self-conscious phase with it where I'm curious how the editing process will go. Yeah, very excited for this. Yeah. And Mats, what was your favorite experience? You are muted somehow. That one. Uh, yeah, I've only played a couple of games, so uh, I guess I'll have to pick yours. Uh, Last words, um, which is about um, you play as the sibling or relative or lover or someone dead, and and an angel that tries to med mediate communication between them. And I played the living person. And uh, I basically spent one and a half hour talking to myself and also drawing, which was very weird and uh, and and sad and lonely and uh, and uh, yeah, it was I, I, it was it was something I hadn't tried before having this kind of. I knew there was someone somebody listening to me, but I don't didn't know what they were feeling or going through or how they were reacting. And that was that was an interesting feeling. Uh, almost unique in a sense that I that I ha certainly haven't uh, tried in any other uh, LARP or role playing experience. So that's very interesting. Cool. Thank you, Sarah. Do you want to share something with us? Sorry, I've been like trying to write down. I've been like trying to remember all the ones I've played just in the last six months, and I played a lot. Like so I just really was like surprised, and I played with almost all of you that have your cameras on. So I feel like I would like, if I picked only one, like I would like offend the rest of yours. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. You don't, you all have thick skins, but um, I will, I will just go ahead. I will go ahead and say Garrett's, I think it's called Endgame LARP. Endgame. Right. Yeah. Um, the, and the only reason I would, I'll point that one out is um, it was kind of early in the quarantine and it was the first time I had seen like your spreadsheet system that you use for your games and like just the different like how we were able to like build the characters and build out the um the oh it's a, it's a game about a an online competitive gaming group yes garrett's spreadsheet system uh but they were gonna break up like they had decided to break up and it was just role playing through the breakup essentially so it, and it got really and it was also the first game where i was like wow where i was really emotionally like like crying at the end and i was like dang okay like so like that's kind of why i picked that one but but um i loved the avalon game i loved your cyberpunk madness mads i love you know i think i played pop with john i can't remember if you played that with me but um obviously we played the bat game 
Um, so yes, yeah, so there's some, some really, really great stuff that we've been able to play. Fair enough. You're right. Technically it's not. Okay. <laughs> well, if you played it online. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and from the invisible crowd, uh, does anybody want to tell us about their favorite experience? <laughs> like BPG, for example? Well, um, I mean, I, I never played, uh, to be honest, I never played the, uh, your uh, uh, classic logs that happen now, but it's, uh, I usually did uh, when I played uh, like, Arp style online was basically um, uh, just freeform and using um, my own framework, this direction storytelling, which is a uh, yeah basically uh, facilitates uh, having plots and uh, yeah bringing them together. But uh, so it was a freeform experience, and uh, um, well, it's uh, it was not much different than uh, sitting together, so I don't have anything uh, specific to add to that. Yeah. Well, I think directions can be played as a lab, right? So, well, basically, it's uh, you can play. It, I mean, you can play basically. Uh, it's a smooth transition to to go from a tabletop to to a freeform. So it's uh, um, and. I, uh, I find it uh, designed also intentionally like that to to give people also like uh, both uh, positions to to be able basically to be able to uh, sit at the table to to go into character more to stand up interact uh, grab some props or or don't do that so it's I think it's um, it's nice to have the flexibility to give people the option to to uh, do whatever they feel comfortable with or invite them to go. A bit further if they want. Good, yeah, thank you for sharing. And I have results from the questionnaire. <laughs> I don't know how, how interesting they are. Maybe we shouldn't spend too much time on them, but um, are they visible to everybody? Cool. So we see like how many digital apps uh, have you played? And we see there are people who have already played more than 20 times, others five to 20 times, two to five is 30% and we have two people in here who haven't played yet, cool. And so I can see there's a, a very large variety of how much people have played LARPs online. Um, oh yes, <laughs> and Matt says he missed the option for discovering LARPs on, on Gareth's blog. Yeah, I try to add stuff there, but it's just too much going on, right? And though there's also Olivia Montoya's large collection of games, which is a great resource. And they have based that on a template which Kate Hill has started for LARP, LARP Shack, I think. And then the people from Kinecon have contributed a lot to that list before it now is like something which is, was a little bit like polished and is full of good games, I would say. And yeah, so everybody has like friends or friends of friends to find games. The f and Facebook is among LARPers, interestingly, much more popular than among tabletop gamers. I don't know much about like how the, the tabletop groups I know on Facebook are all toxic <laughs> to my experience, which isn't true for the LARP groups, interestingly. So it's not necessarily the platform. Um, and uh, yeah, and then there's the Discord and Slack communities that also goes for me. And um, interestingly, uh, I put like an option in there, which is like that people look for on their face-to-face -face LARP groups. And I saw that some LARP groups, which usually only meet face-to-face -face also, like were trying to play online. But I think they are not connected necessarily to the online community. So they don't find their way in here. So for me, that's an indicator that this is developing into an, a community in itself because like people from all directions come in here. But yeah, maybe that's a stretch <laughs> from 10 people in a survey, <laughs> which doesn't have the best options to pick from. Yeah, and finally, um, yeah, when, when the pandemic is over and like at least at the one convention, uh, the Kinecon, uh, they made a, a survey afterwards, will you continue to play online or the 
also the it's full of laughs online convention asked that and there were many people who said i won't continue playing online if, if i can meet my friends in real life i won't yeah but as we can see people who meet here <laughs> they are totally and 90 percent would continue to play online and finally um would you pay for playing a game online which is an interesting question for me because it is something i'm very curious about about that format because it is something i'm not familiar with as coming from tabletop um, while the lab community is often based around that and yeah it's a already five people in this call have already done so and paid for uh, a game online i still want to because i think also that creators deserve that it's just that i'm so used to the print and play format that it hasn't happened yet yeah but i think what tara is doing there is great and definitely deserves being paid for for example and many others yeah somebody put other in so i don't know if that is uh, somebody who wants to comment on that or if we shall just go over this <laughs> looks like it's fine all right we have um, 20 more minutes and so i thought we could have a give us your question and the group tries to help you to find an answer uh, to this um, i call this the the wall your wall to break through element and if somebody has something you want to give into the group to discuss And again, I would make a start and I say that I want to design a game for TikTok. And um, I wonder if anybody has ideas how that could be done to give you the, the context. TikTok is this platform, very popular everywhere in the world. Maybe it's not available in the US soon anymore. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> But I don't think so. I have an immediate thought about that. Um, so I know you could easily do a telephone style game, like a game of telephone, because a, a very popular thing that people do in TikTok is they, you can do a, an essential, I don't know if there's a limit, but like an essentially infinite string of replies to videos. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it, a lot of people do it as like a song. Somebody does one song lyric, someone does the next song lyric, someone does, or they harmonize, or they add a harmony, add a harmony. Um, so you could do something like that. There is definitely a lot of, um, there is a lot of back and forth role playing going on on TikTok. I don't know if it's really considered LARPing yet. I know there was like a speech about this at Somokota this year. Um, I think it's on their YouTube channel. Some, their TikTok was mentioned, um, in the speech. I don't remember who it was that gave that speech. I could try to find it later. It would be um, great. But yeah, there is a lot of call and response possibilities you could do content wise or I don't know, but like structure wise there, that would be like what you could work with. That reminds me of a couple games I've thrown in chat. Uh, Uneasy Lies the Head is a pass the brush style game where you pass a crown and continue a story via TikTok. Um, I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know if it's been played, but that That is one, one thing I've seen so far to help answer your question, Garrett, of what does TikTok LARPing look like? Thank you. Yeah, and I, Netta, I was also thinking about your comment at the beginning about making the platform diegetic, like, and play being a TikTok user. So one could even say that most people on TikTok are already role-playing. <laughs> This reminds, their personas. Me, this reminds me of um, Sean Roski's Insta Yoga, the game of being a yoga influencer on Instagram, where like you do yoga poses and, and photograph yourself. I don't know a lot of detail. Uh, I think you may have played it, Garrett. Do you want to speak I on that before it, we yes. hear uh, Netta drop bombs about making the uh, implicit explicit or whatever? Absolutely. So Insta Yoga, the game is a hashtag and you can find it on Instagram. And I participated and you can see me in yoga pose there. Um, so uh, what you do is you you make a you make a pose you read like a a reflective message like a some something something esoteric sometimes something humanistic depending on your style and uh you post that message together with your photo online and others can respond to that and that's more or less the game and it works extremely well like yeah and All the players write, that's the important part, nearly missed that. 
Everybody writes who's playing the game writes supportive and enthusiastic comments under your photo. So with four players, you have three comments under your photo, which say what a fantastic post posture that is, how true it, it was, what you were saying. Yeah, and the effect is extremely good for your well-being, I would say. So it's a game which releases you with a lot of joy. I came to think about that it, you could do ensemble stories uh, with TikTok. You can maybe people could have masks, so they put on one mask for one scene, uh, one video, and then another one, or bring in the spouse for one scene, something like that. Oh, oh yes, yeah, that sounds cool. Because of the shortness of the videos, right? Yeah, cool. It makes me think of the sort of like lingua franca of TikTok users where like towel on head equals girlfriend, baseball cap backwards equals boyfriend. Uh, maybe there's something to be played with that, those iconic roles, developing it further on your idea mass. Oh. I love this idea, Garrett. I, uh, it reminds me of the movie 13, which uh, this is just, Coming from not LARP, <laughs> I'm just gonna bring in some weird thoughts, but um, I, uh, I like the idea of designing a game around sort of like noticing a convention in the world that you maybe judge or feel alienated from and like finding a part of yourself that could imagine participating in it and then trying to like inhabit that part of yourself. It reminds me of 13 because it's a movie about being 13 that's just very viscerally accurate to me. Um, and it's like a part of myself that I don't usually like to admit is there or maybe suppress of like extreme self-consciousness and something about TikTok stars. It just, there's, I don't know if this is a universal experience, but this thing of like putting yourself out there on these social media platforms, I love the idea of making that into a game and inviting people to like inhabit the part of themselves that would do such a thing. Yeah, I also love the idea of deliberately embracing TikTok and other social media platforms as part of the LARP, even though it's definitely not something that I've really experimented with myself, because there was a big um, article, I think it was in like The Guardian or something, and I got a notification for it because I have digital LARP as one of my Google alerts, and it described people portraying characters on Twitter as digital LARPing, but not even characters, like somebody pretending to be like a world leader, talking to another world leader. And I'm like, that's really interesting that they'd call it that, but it's almost come full circle, you know, because of course, a lot of us have been role playing online and text based role play. I mean, I started doing that when I was 16, before I even knew what LARP was. So it's very interesting how that's come full circle and people you know, have debated a lot about it. And, you know, um, the right wing has kind of tried to, to co-op LARPing as like, you know, a general term or even like an insult. Um, and they, they, you know, have used that a lot. But I, I feel like it's better to continue to embrace the word for us and to bring it full circle and to definitely include these social media games as, uh, as a form of LARPing. I mean, it's, it's so cool. I, I definitely see, I'm not on TikTok, but I see my friends posting their TikToks to Facebook and they're, they're LARPing. The only real difference between that and a long form LAUG or digital LARP is that they're limited and in, in time. Uh, and it's almost like when Twitter came out, when Twitter first came out, people didn't like the short character length and it was even shorter than it is now. Right. And, um, I think people have been criticizing TikTok for that, you know, the, the short length, but it means that you have to focus on brevity. You have to get a lot of emotional impact in a short amount of time. And that can really shape how the LARP goes. So I, I really look forward to seeing what you design in there, Garrett. I'm, I'm excited to, I might sign up before Sunday when they try to lock everything down here in the US and uh, try to play. Let's see, yes. <laughs> Does anybody have uh, a wall to break through? Uh, BPG, you were somehow posing already a question, right? And Mats also has something, so... Uh, which, what do you mean, which... And basically, like, uh, 
what I have as a question is if you have, uh, you know, I describe the way I like to play, like with mm -hmm. this, this uh, style of uh, switching characters, going, especially going meta in between and going back in character. Uh, and um, which is more related, actually, when I think of I have friend to do a, a improv theater. So I think he has, it has a lot of uh, also similarities to that. But uh, I was wondering if, if you can recommend to me any games platforms to say, hey, if that's what you like, like I like like Jeep form or American freeform games, this type of stuff and where you say, hey, this is, you should check out this or you should check out this platform. Uh, I'd be welcome to hear suggestions like that, yeah. Well, um, I find it very interesting and I was, uh, like Jay, um, a designer of a very successful Kickstarter called Wonder Home, a tabletop RPG, talked about idle dreaming. And that uh, that is coming from dream is cue from every elder, that phrase. And um, I, But I finally, I think I understood it, or I, at least I understood it well enough that, that I can start thinking about it. And idle dreaming is like the talking about possibilities. So not saying like what has, what, what you said is what happened, but like, turn it back and feel like, but we could also do it that way. Or let's do that scene again, similar, but I have an idea for doing it a little bit different. And like all this meta talk. And I, I really enjoyed the idea of like leaning back and not insisting on, of having this continuous stream of play, but doing the exact opposite. And then I think I can start liking it again. And uh, at least face to face, I played several labs like that, where you are like adapt little a little bit, like Saraband, for example. The the opening scene in Saraband yeah. is, I think, one of the most fascinating designs I've ever played in. Like where you play the beginning of a TV show, so to say, where everything happens exactly the same, like with very small nuances depending on what you played before. Like you play a cafe and people visiting a cafe every day, and I always wanted to design. A log for online because log with the possibilities to record what you have done would make it possible to compare the different versions of the opening scene and that would be something i would completely be amazed about looking at the the, the small differences between scenes afterwards dpg mm -hmm. at risk of telling you things you already know about uh mathis holter and emily Kerbas's play with intent uh, as a framework yes. strikes me as something that could be done online. Okay, cool. Yes, that's, that's, uh, that's exactly the, I mean, I, I really love this uh, document, uh, Play With Intent, and uh, that's uh, exactly how I uh, love playing, yeah. Um, I've got one more slice on this. Um, my own workshop, LARP Jam, is a round robin LARP creation tool where you're handed a machine generated uh, robot piece of poetry and like one random game mechanic and you and your group sit down and try and make a LARP in about 40 minutes before you pass that half-built monster onto the next group who then try and finish it. Um, my thought is to use some of those extra tools to kind of spice up your already play with intent lifestyle with um, a new chunk of things to try out. Um, yeah, and I'll drop a link in the chat. We have time for another question, a wall to break through, something, and Tara has one. I do. I would like to get people from beyond the LARP community involved in LARPing online. And I feel like if there was ever a time to do it, like we're having a moment, now is the time. And my interest in this is, is kind of twofold. First of all, you know, it's always been, it's always been a conversation of like, when will LARP be mainstream? And LARP has become almost a mainstream word, um, even if it is somewhat pejorative in some locations. So we're kind of almost there. Online makes it more uh, accessible in a lot of ways. It makes it free or low cost. And so obviously, you know, one of my goals is to, you know, expand the community and embrace new people who share, you know, our, our values. Uh, the other consideration is I, you know, I, I run some of these games 
for profit as my own business to actually pay for my um, my health care expenses. And, you know, that's the other part of it is I'd love to expand it beyond just the community because I have a model to run it like an escape room, which is a lot more mainstream. Um, so, yeah, I mean, any ideas for kind of expanding it beyond you know, the people that we already know on Facebook and like friends of friends. Um, and if we should do that, because then you get randos in, right? And you don't know what random people are like, where, whereas if like, you know, SJ has played with me before, if SJ refers someone in, I can generally assume that like, they're probably not a horrible person. But if it's some random person that I've never met, I don't, I don't know, they might come in and like try to wreck the game or like, you know, just really go against the values. So should we do that? Should we try to expand? And if so, how can we expand beyond our existing community? Mm, my initial idea is to sort of um, do some, uh, make ties with existing conventions and uh, lab structures to sort of fit the same profile um, places like uh, Sancon or uh, Festival, where I'm from, seems to have very much the same mindset. Find some ambassadors, people that uh, that you know that go to these places and say, make some um, some printout cards or something. Uh, maybe maybe put up a poster, depending on your budget, I guess. Um, would be a way to do it. Um, I I think that it's hard to you might have to endure some bad X if you want to grow. Uh, there's always going to be assholes and there's going to be some people who maybe aren't explicitly assholes, but eventually rub the wrong way that you might have to kick out. I think that's just sort of part of the game of having a community. I wonder... Um, what... Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Neva. Okay. Um, I wonder about uh, getting involved in other communities that are like a little bit similar such as psychodrama or experimental theater experimental dance and trying to get a foot in the door with people who are already involved in things like that i love that the actually the immersive theater community has been really open to uh to larf and to us listing larf on their on their page which is great i worry about like the psychodrama community because Whenever I post anything that's like remotely intentional about LARPing close to home or LARPing for emotional connection or immersion, people are like, you're doing therapy, you're totally horrible. So I really want to connect with that community, but I'm so afraid of just taking so much heat. Like somebody already threatened to sue me because- <laughs> because for not being trained or something? Yeah, for, for not being trained, but for giving people a space to uh, LARP while embodying or confronting some of the issues they have, which I think is a lot safer than giving them a space and not giving them any tools because it's right. going to happen anyway. Um, so, yeah, I want to go there. I so want to go there, um, but I'm so afraid of getting sued. <laughs> True. So, yay. Um, I, I wanted to circle back to the immersive theater or like or going out and contacting theater groups so very very specifically like when the quarantine sort of early like spring happened I got wind of a group in Massachusetts that yeah they just needed work for their actors and they I guess reached out or somebody reached out to somebody and they connected with some um, games that they could run they could they could train their actors to run um, and participate in. And so I did, I'm going to link them. So I, and they sell tickets. And um, the one that I played was uh, Pass the Sugar Please by Cleo Zun Davis, who's all, it's also in the Honey and Hot Wax anthology. If you haven't picked that one up, I recommend that you do. And they played it over Zoom. And I signed up and I knew like one person on that thing and that was it like and it was fine it ran just fine and yeah it was like complete strangers I didn't know and everyone had a great a great time. Um, so it's definitely possible to do that and maybe if you have if you partner with acting companies or acting troops 
um, that might be a way to make a win-win situation where you give them interesting content and they can facilitate it in a more professional way that maybe like some rando couldn't do. But anyway. Awesome, thank you. It looks like they're still doing it. I was like, I just looked, I'm like, oh, they're still running it, that's great. I also wanted to quote from the chat uh, that Hannah has said that I think getting people to book a, an escape room but cooler kind of event would be possible, but not to but to enable them to play, they'll need help in the form of explicit templates like alibis, default actions, goals, relationships, etc. Made a very very user friendly, in my opinion. That's what she says. Yeah, and um, yeah, thank you for that contribution. And um, and then one other user uh, says, like, go avoid uh, lawsuits, just require everyone to sign a disclosure, similar to how those uh, eggs throwing companies to remove any liability. <laughs> yeah, that That's might also idea. be good, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, my personal contribution is maybe that if people don't want to play emotionally because they are just not used to that and it's also nobody's duty to do that uh, then let's design non-emotional games for them and if you don't want to stop at escape rooms which i personally find boring because i'm not into puzzles and under uh, time pressure is work for me and not fun <laughs> however i think uh, designing something a little bit cynical a little bit ab absurd might even bring companies in and companies are also a relatively safe space because people have something to lose if they misbehave <laughs> they <laughs> have a problem at work uh, so um my my there's there's one lab I, I i never attended but i love to see that which is uh, about fake it fake it until you make it where you pretend to be business people and uh, which are super serious about their business stuff and so on and like this could especially give in corporate drone kind of people an opportunity to release the stress they have at work by overemphasizing the worst colleague they ever had, for example. So designing, designing a game about the real issues they have at the organization they, they are in, in a way which doesn't impose to them that they do anything officially emotional. It can turn emotional in the end. It can be a personal experience in the end, but they won't recognize until the end w without like uh, n not saying that I would like override their safety in any sense, but in the sense of opening them carefully and fruitfully for their own well-being. Yeah, pseudo alpha males arguing in scry, scrifacing the first person they could. <laughs> Sacrificing, sacrificing sacrificing the first person they could yeah something like this <laughs> so what hannah says in the chat the time is over um people who participate in the convention um will possibly now play a game i will play pop now a lark um which i played in person before which is emulating online spaces and now for the first time i play it actually online about balloon fetishists um, I'm very much looking forward to play that and don't want to miss that. Other people, especially on the other side of the ocean, um, need to go back to work or continue their day. Thank you for joining us in your lunch break. And um, yeah, so Thank you. I hope you have a possibility to reach out to me. If anything happened in this um, recording where you say I don't want to see that this is put online, then I will not publish the video, obviously. If you don't come back to me in the next 72 hours or so, uh, then I would mm, publish this and uh, hopefully people can enjoy that also when watching this thing. Thank you so much for being with us and maybe we can continue talking another time. It would be a pleasure. Thank you. And I stop the recording here. Um,